Welcome to Wesley Impact, I'm Keith Garner. Have you ever found yourself in an impossible position and you know you mustn't give up? Here on Wesley Impact, I've had the privilege over the years of speaking with literally hundreds of people who each share a unique part of the Christian faith and how that faith has applied to their own lives and areas of work. My hope is that you join us each week and that as you do, you get a cross section of the different expressions of Christian faith, areas of relevance to people from all walks of life and the immeasurable love of God that has the ability to reach into any situation and bring healing and hope. In today's episode of Wesley Impact, I'll be speaking with one of Australia's most respected television journalists and news anchors turned radio host, Lee Hatcher. He stood the test of time in the rough and tumble media industry and he's never had to compromise his faith. We'll be joined by Lucy Fisher, who will sing Mercy Seat. I'm going to share some thoughts today on the teaching of Jesus that you find in John 14, 8 to 17. Now, John 14 has much to say to us about the distinctive call of Jesus Christ and his unique nature. But it also has a great deal to say to us about the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, appropriate today. And we'll turn our minds to that thought also. At Wesley Mission, we count it a privilege to do the work we do. Our work covers a broad section of our community. And whilst we can't meet every need, we give our best to do all the good we can. We've got a huge workforce comprising of over 2,000 paid staff and over 4,000 volunteers who help us in all areas of our work. Here's a look at the valuable contribution of some of our volunteers. Uh, my name's Sophie and I'm currently volunteering on my student placement at Wesley Mission Life Skills in Ashfield. I chose to volunteer with Wesley Mission because I've always wanted to work with people uh, who have a disability um, and I was kind of searching around and I've actually heard really good things about Wesley Mission from past volunteers that have been here. Wesley Life Skills, it provides um, programs for post school leavers, so over 18, um, and just gives them programs um, to help them kind of get involved and uh, build up a skill base. Volunteering here at Wesley Life Skills really helps my studying because um, it actually helps me get the hands-on experience. Obviously being in a classroom is fantastic because I learn all the, the knowledge, uh, but actually being here and learning how to interact with the clients, um, it really definitely enhances it. I would definitely recommend Wesley Mission to other students. Um, all the staff I've met have been lovely to me um, and all the clients as well, they're like a big family, so um, it's a really nice atmosphere and place to work. My name is Ron Page and I volunteer at Wesley Tail in Arabin. I've been uh, volunteering at Wesley Mission for 10 years. As a volunteer, I'm the uh, resident liaison officer. I go between, between management and uh, residents. Uh, I uh, look after the library. I'm a uh, preacher occasionally and I lead the Bible study as well as sorting the mail for residents. It not only gives me a purpose, but also keeps me active and activity leads to longevity. I think that the, they appreciate the care that's given to them. I asked a question of someone yesterday and I said, uh, are you happy here? And they said, how could I not be happy with someone like you looking after us? I thought that was a good answer, but it, it does show how important volunteers are. I'm Jax and I'm a volunteer with Lifeline. I've been volunteering for about four years now. Lifeline provides a service to people who are in distress, um, who are having problems and who just need someone to talk to to help them sort out what they need to do. I would certainly recommend volunteering for Lifeline. I find it immensely rewarding. Um, it can be emotionally quite difficult, but we get a lot of support. We get a lot of supervision through group supervision and personal supervision. You just get so much out of it. Oh, my name is Margaret and I volunteer for Wesley Mission School for Seniors. 
As a volunteer, I'm helping teach the square dance classes. You meet friendly people. Uh, they're all people who are self-motivated and energetic, and they're just the sort of people that I would like to meet. My name is Simon Parker, and I volunteer at Wesley Connect. Wesley Connect is a food service. So basically our clients come in and we give them non-perishable food items. We also offer tea or coffee and we may sit with them and if need be we connect them to other facilities that are connected to Wesley Mission. What I enjoy most about Wesley Mission and volunteering here is the fact that I get to be a part of something greater than myself and for me the sense of fulfillment from that is one of the most joyful things that I think anybody could have. If you've ever thought of volunteering at Wesley Mission definitely do it because it is fantastic. If you're thinking about volunteering for Wesley Mission, you'll receive much more than you can possibly give. If I came across someone who was interested in volunteering, I would say go for it. I would encourage people to volunteer at Wesley Mission because there's so much fulfilment in meeting the needs of those that are less fortunate than ourselves. Come along to Wesley Mission and volunteer. It's really good fun. Sweetheart, we can only pick one. Pick your favourite. Look. Come on. Mommy, where are we going? I don't know. Anywhere but here. For some, homelessness is safer than home. 17% of Australia's homeless are aged under 12. Donate today. As I mentioned earlier on Wesley Impact, I've had the honour of speaking with such a broad cross-section of people who represent an aspect of the Christian faith. Over the years, we've spoken with hundreds of people and I'm in the process of producing a perspective DVD series, which is a selection of interviews from people in public leadership who excel in the sporting arena or are well known in the entertainment industry or whatever. And the first instalment is Perspectives on Faith and Leadership, which brings together interviews with interesting people. Andrew Scipioni, the New South Wales Police Commissioner. Dr Graham Clark, who developed that wonderful cochlear ear implant. And the former political leader, John Brockton. Today, I'd like to take a look at the interview with well-respected TV journalist, news anchor and media personality, Lee Hatcher. When he appeared on Wesley Impact, I asked him why he chose to be a journalist. Lee's a fine Christian journalist and one whose life has made a difference. I value his friendship and I hope you'll enjoy this interview. Well, there was no grand design, I must say. I, did, I wasn't one of those kids who spent their whole childhood thinking, I want to be a newsman. Mm -hmm. I, if you'd asked me in my final year of high school, where do you want to go? I'd say, I want to be in show business, mm -hmm. which I think, well, wh what did that mean? Mm -hmm. My parents directed me towards radio. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I got a job as an office boy at 2GB in Sydney mm -hmm. in 1973. First day, 12th of November 1973, I walked into the newsroom oh, yeah. on my first yeah. delivery there. And I must say, it was love at first sight. I was absolutely captivated mm -hmm. by the buzz of it, the sound, those clunky old mm -hmm. telephones, telex machines, um, this tape spooling, people yelling. And I'd, I had this stupid kind of smile on my face as I stood there and thought, oh, this is just wonderful. You were just waiting for that opportunity when you could be, you know. In yeah. That, yeah, and and I thought, well, uh, my, my the job of an office boy was supposed to expose you to the various parts of the radio station where you could pick where you wanted to go. Mm. And I think my my decision was made on that first day. And I badgered the news director for about five months until he finally relented, I think, to just shut me up as much as anything else. So the fast forward to this new opportunity, yes. it's, it's, it kind of picks up then, doesn't it, from that point? Yeah, well, I've said numbers of times how, in all honesty, while many of my journalistic colleagues might be rather confused about this, much of my life, my faith and my work will culminate in Open House. Mm -hmm. It's a content-driven program, 8 to 11 Sunday nights around this uh, network of mm -hmm. Christian radio stations. And it's very content-driven. We, like your program, do interviews with lots of interesting people mm -hmm. and connect with an audience to an extent that you you find quite rare in, in media today. So there are so many things about what I've experienced in work, what I've experienced in life, and in my faith, where I think, well, this has just uniquely equipped me for this opportunity. And the Jesus thing, your faith, uh, uh, affects the way you do the journalism, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, it can't help it. And it's been... 
I think it's, there are so many ways in which that's true. I think perhaps what I say is more than anything else, it's, a, it's drawn a big picture for me. Mm. So in the news, you're always concentrating on the, the crisis of the moment or the crisis of the, mm. the hour and the huge story. Mm. But I know a bigger picture mm. and I know the one who designed that, mm. sustains it and runs it. Lee, we've talked before about some of the challenges that you faced. I know you were uh, willing and you've written about the, the challenges you faced in terms of your, your own health. H how important is that in your Christian journey? Oh, I think it was a defining time in my uh, life, certainly my career, because it uh, led to two years of unemployment, and certainly in my faith. Um, in the middle of my summer holidays of 1998, from nowhere I contracted an everyday virus that, to cut a long and very uh, torturous story short, uh, meant two and a quarter years in the midst of the very real and very debilitating chronic fatigue syndrome. I, said, I, I lost my job. I think you talk about growing up and becoming... Oh, yeah. ..in that time. I, I think I've... I grew up in my faith. I think I was, I was clearly someone who believed in God and knew the reality of Jesus and, and believed in the Bible and everything like that. But I think it was more a head knowledge than a heart knowledge. Mm. And this was a very um, difficult time, a very challenging time, where everything is thrown up in the air. Mm. And, and I lost a lot, materially, in my career, in my health. Mm. And yet there is nothing like suffering mm. to sort out what's really important in life. And for me, it was a great journey close to God uh, with the God of all comfort. That's not always the case with, with Christian people who go through suffering, of course. Mm. But I was, I was deeply privileged to, as I said, grow up in my faith. So I, I didn't have to be preached at mm. and, and convinced in my head that God was real. I, I knew it in my life. Mm. And it was a very um, big difference to where I'd been in my Christian life before. Look, you talked a moment ago about the big pitch. You talked about this, this experience that helps you to grasp that. Um, I think it's important, isn't it, really, that Christians are not just preaching the gospel at people, but doing what they do every day yeah. in the knowledge of their experience and the Christian gospel. Yeah. I mean, you must find sometimes Christians think, oh, well, here's a great guy, he's on the television, he'll advertise our, our, our event, our <laughs> church, right. to, yeah. to communicate the faith. It's not yeah. really just about that, is it? No. I think what, what my illness taught me is the, is the foundational imperative of love. Mm. If love drives your every action mm. in life, especially in the Christian life, as we're told to do by Jesus. Mm. It will fix up so much about what we do and especially why we do it, mm. how long we might do it mm. and the reasons for it. Mm. Um, if we're doing it to put uh, runs on the board or you know, run up notches on our belts of conversion, say, mm. or, or, or achievements that the world might be, might be impressed by, it's all pretty empty. Mm. And, mm. and yet, if we're, we're founded on the biblical imperative of love, sure it kind of fixes up a lot of Christian ministry. But we, we are interested in this new program. Tell us about what the plans are for the program. It, it... I'm already feeling the great privilege, you know, weeks into it, uh, of the number of people, uh, really interesting people, um, that I've had the privilege to, to meet and interview. I'm sure you find it here as well. Um, my job in the news business is just basically reading the news day to day. Um, and, and it's an absorbing job and I really enjoy it and it's, it's a very challenging job. But this is so, something so different where you're really immersing yourself and, and I seek to do the audience as well in, in the lives of real people and tell stories. Mm. Um, not necessarily new stories but real stories of, of real people, often very uplifting stories and I'm, I'm already feeling the I, weight of responsibility but also the great privilege of it. And I have to remind myself, you know, we film this in Sydney as many people know, but it goes all around Australia and so yeah. some of our uh, viewers are in Melbourne and Brisbane, they, they love it and you have the same experience. Oh yeah, and it's, I've had the privilege of living outside of the, the eastern seaboard mm. um, and working outside. So I well know how people of the east are viewed by mm. those in Perth or Adelaide or, or, or even Melbourne, you know, mm. people viewing mm. Sydney. So um, I, I've got a real sense of what the, the national audience is like. Mm. And, uh, and this is not only a national but international message that we seek to bring. 
Now, there are going to be more interviews with people like Lee Hatcher sharing their stories and their perspectives on faith and leadership on this DVD. It's available for sale and all interviews are available also on our website. To obtain the DVD or watch the interviews, either individually or as a house group or whatever, you can go online and visit the website wesleymission.org.au. Please now welcome Lucy Fisher as she sings Mercy Seat. Where everything is unknown I face the power of sin on my own I did not know of a place I could go Where I could find a way to heal my wounded soul to his presence without fear into the holy place where his mercy hovers near I'm running I'm running I'm running to the mercy seat where Jesus is calling he said his grace will cover me his blood will flow freely he will provide Over 44% of households suffer from financial stress. Of those, 28% develop a diagnosed mental illness, and 10% experience domestic violence. Avoiding your finances makes it even worse, so Wesley Mission offers much needed support to help families face their financial future stress-free. Donate today to help families face their future stress-free. Most of our grandchildren have yet to get to school age, but some are there now. And all children at school know all too well what show and tell is all about. This classroom moment remains important to young children. Jesus was actually the teacher. 
but one of his disciples wanted him to show and tell. Philip wanted to pull back the curtain and help us to see the nature of God. Are we like the disciples? Do we want to know more? Well, Jesus is willing to tell us. Of course, we, we find in the early part of, of John chapter 14, that wonderful verse 6, which tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And, and if he's truth, he's willing to be exposed for exactly who he is. But he makes a more profound promise, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Chapters 14 and 16 in John's Gospel are two of the great chapters on the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit's purpose, remembering the Holy Spirit is a person who comes alongside us, leads us into all truth, and bears witness to Jesus. But in John 14, 14 to 17, we read these words. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives in you and will be in you. See, in Jesus, we see what the nature of the fullness of God is all about. Elsewhere in Scripture, we read, the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelleth in my Lord. Now, that truth is something very real when it comes to the person of Jesus. Because the Father, God, we say, what is he like? Well, if we want to know what he's like, we see it in the person of Jesus, in his words, in his actions, in the kind of character and nature and response that he makes to people. God answers prayer in Jesus' name. Now, we can have all kinds of uh, sophisticated takes on prayer, but I think the promise that we find in verse 14 is very powerful. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, I don't think that means that we can ask to all be millionaires. I don't think that's what it's saying. But if we ask for things in his name, that's in his nature, that accord with his will, that are in tune with what his purposes really are, if we ask for those things, then he will respond. Jesus imparts the Spirit to each one of us to guide and strengthen our lives. So we read in verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. We're perhaps familiar with the term advocate in the legal setting of a courtroom, where we recognise that somebody is there to speak for us, to represent us. And the Holy Spirit definitely has that sense of being alongside us and speaking to the Father on our behalf. And most powerful of all, perhaps the most important truth of all in this short cameo passage from the 14th chapter of John is that which is encompassed in verse 17. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Now, I think this is really, really important to recognise that the God who created the world the God who's made himself known to us in Jesus actually lives within our lives and hearts. And so when we say, where is God? Well, if we belong to him, if we make a confession day by day to follow him and serve him, then he lives within us. Christ within us, the hope of glory, writes Paul elsewhere. That real sense in which uh, the Christian faith becomes real, not because it's something that we've intellectually come to terms with, not because we've simply heard what somebody else has said, but because it, he abides with us in the deepest places of our lives. We, we read elsewhere and we come to the 15th chapter and we're very conscious that he abides in us, he lives us within us and may that inspiration make a difference to you today and may lead you guide you empower you strengthen you so that you might know that the work of the holy spirit is not just an intellectual statement it's a real powerful living truth he lives within us if you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. 
On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. WesleyMission.org.au Hey, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Wesley Impact. I hope you've enjoyed watching or perhaps for some of you reliving the interview with Lee Hatcher. Pentecost and the gift of the Spirit is so important to celebrate. If you'd like to find out more about any part of our work at Wesley Mission or ask me any questions about the Christian faith, don't have hesitations in sending me an email. The website is wesleymission.org.au and the email is impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Thank you for watching today. I'm looking forward already to seeing you next week and sharing with you more. Become a regular at Wesley Impact. God bless you in the coming days and all throughout this week. Wesley Mission's volunteers provide more than 130,000 volunteer hours each year. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.